So good afternoon, everyone. I would like to call the uh, City Council meeting on the 19th, 2020, to order. Would the clerk take the uh, call the roll, please? Beckin? Here. Johnson? Johnson? We'll come back to him. Leo? Here. Lewis? Here. Peterson? Here. Trester? Here. For Plank? For Plank? You're muted, Jane. Here. And Johnson? Here. Okay, all present and accounted for. Uh, are there uh, any agenda changes to be proposed? All right, hearing none, we'll uh, move forward. Um, I'd like to say a few words before opening up for public comments, um, as what I uh, want to say may help inform further discussions. Uh, at a recent meeting, Councilmember Leo asked to have a resolution to fly the pride flag added to the agenda as an action item. Um, as we know, agenda items uh, changes require unanimous consent of the council, uh, which is part of the council's adopted rules of procedure. A council member did object to the agenda change on the basis that the, that the rule is there to ensure transparency so that the public is aware of action items coming before the council and can comment on them uh, bef uh, if they wish before council vote. Changes to an agenda for action items are typically reserved for matters involving loss of life and property and that otherwise could not be postponed. Therefore, our standard procedure would have been to refer a non-lifening uh, threatening matter to workshop, which would be this one, um, and or ultimately to be voted upon at a regular council meeting, uh, which would be this coming Monday. Conversely, any two council members could have requested a special council meeting, which would only require eight, 18 hours of public notice. I wanna make it clear that at no time did any member of the council speak in opposition to flying the pride flag at city hall only that the adopted council rules be uh, followed. What unfortunately transpired was a social media storm that was fueled in part by some false and misleading statements on social media. Therefore, the city installed the pride flag on City Hall prior to formal deliberations by the council to prevent community discussions from getting further off track. It was stated that last year, the city declined to fl fly the flag. This is simply not true. The matter was never brought up as an action item to be voted on. It was also stated that um, the reason the council gave was that Nazis might want to fly the flag too. That statement is also not true. The word Nazi was never expressed in a council meeting or recorded in any minutes then or to my knowledge at any other time. And I regret using the word today. What council did do last year was to make Saugatuck the first city in our local area to issue a proclamation making June 2019 Pride Month and approve painting the pride colors on a prominent section of sidewalk on Culver Street. The council also took action proclaiming June 2020 as Pride Month at the May 26th regular meeting. But today the issue has uh, uh, never been opposition to flying the pride flag. The issue simply was following our procedure. So before today's deliberations, I wanna remind everyone about several council rules of operation. Concern has been expressed that we have not always followed the rules, uh, adhered to strictly to the rules. I can recall only a few occasions when I may not enforce, have enforced the rules strictly, um, and I do regret that but there's two rules in particular that I wanna point out before we uh, go on. Uh, one is to be recognized before speaking. To quote the uh, rules of, of procedure for the council, during the council discussion and debate, no council member shall speak until being recognized for that purpose by the presiding officer. After such recognition, the council member shall confine discussion to the question at hand and to its merits and shall not be interrupted except by a point of order or privilege raised by another council member. Speakers should address their remarks to the presiding officer, maintain a courteous tone, and avoid interjecting a personal note into the debate. 
The second one is that there should be no debate during public comments. I'll quote again from our procedure. Council members shall refrain from argument with a member of the public or staff at city council meetings since these arguments seldom resolve concerns and many times inflame feeling at a public meeting. So if you wish to interrupt the speaker, ask the presiding officer to make a point of order. They further state that the presiding officer shall be responsible for support enforcing these rules of procedure and for enforcing orderly conduct at the meeting. These are council rules, not mine, and I intend to be a bit more formal in enforcing them in the interest of all. So now let's proceed to public comment on agenda items only. I'll remind anyone wishing to make a comment that uh, comments should be limited to three minutes in length. And if you wish to be recognized, uh, unmute your mic um, and uh, uh, make a, a signal to me that you wish to be recognized. So does anyone wish to make a public comment? I recognize Mark Lachey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Great. I, I, I'll keep this short. Um, I have been coming to Saugatuck. I first came in 1982. Uh, I bought property in the area in 91, and I uh, have been a, my partner and I have been full-time residents, um, a neighbor of Barry Johnson's actually, since for about nine years. The reason for all of this is because Saugatuck has been a gay accepting, gay friendly city. Um, and I think in furtherance of that, uh, the council's adoption of the current resolution regarding the pride flag would be beneficial and uh, not only benefit the residents, but uh, the businesses and everyone else concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, I recognize, uh, uh, Dan Fox is, uh, has his hand up, but Mark, uh, Tim Straker, I believe, would have his hand up first. So I'll recognize Tim. Tim, if you want to go first, I have no fine by me. Okay. Yep. Hey, good, after good afternoon, everyone. Thanks. Um, just a, a comment about the procedure and process. I respect that. So thank you for being consistent and following the process. I think uh, based on reading some of the letters that the council received, I would just like to make a comment um, surrounding the process that if you visit the Library of Congress website, there are 12 days, weeks, or months that are nationally recognized observances. Um, of those, uh, uh, African History Month is the month of February uh, from a proclamation by President Ford in 1976. Women's History Month is in March uh, from a proclamation from President Reagan in 1982. And LGBT Pride Month in June is from a proclamation in 1999 from uh, President Clinton. So it is indeed a month. Um, those things that are nationally recognized feel a little different to me in that the, we celebrate um, those underserved populations or populations that haven't had voices or voices that we would like to celebrate already feel acknowledged at the federal level. Um, to Ms. Simon's comments about boundaries around uh, uh, how long a flag flies or um, sort of feeling bullied or intimidated by um, a certain part of the community. Um, it's a month. It's been established as a month since 1999. And I don't think there's any um, ill logic in putting a high school flag up next to a gay flag or replacing it for a few days to um, to honor the idea that uh, we're celebrating high school students for the first time in a way that we haven't been able to do uh, since the last pandemic in 1918. I just think logic proceeds in this that um, there are other nationally observed holidays and that this one uh, feels pretty straightforward. So I just wanted to comment on that. Um, and I appreciate everything that you guys are doing and just hope that you uh, remain not tone deaf to what's going on around the world and that I'm worried that we're, we're giving too much time and energy and column inches to this during a, a month that's otherwise celebratory. So I yield back to the, to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate your comments. Uh, Dan Fox would be next in line. I recognize you. And then uh, Lauren Flanagan. Dan? Uh, Dan Fox from Saugatuck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's a beautiful afternoon, so I'll be brief. On the subject of flag displays, like pretty much everybody in town, I, I think, I support 
wholeheartedly the display of the rainbow pride flag on public property, period. I even offered a resolution in support of precisely that with a different location where there's also a city flagpole. Regardless, what I do not support, however, and candidly find offensive is the other language in the council person's proposal designed to prohibit other such flags representing other such unnamed groups. I don't object as the city's lawyer apparently did for legal reasons. I object because prohibiting other flags so long as they're not hateful or political is the polar opposite of inclusivity. It's exclusivity. I've got mine, but you don't get yours. Legal or not, that prohibition has to go. That sort of thinking has no place, no place here. This is Saugatuck. We don't exclude people. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dan. Um, Laura Flanagan, I think you said. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is Lauren Flanagan. Um, I just feel echoing on uh, Tim Straker that, you know, we can't be tone deaf. I, this is a lot going on in the world right now, and we're known to be an open, welcoming place for all members of the gay community. I don't think we should have had to spend hardly any time on flying a flag and getting a pro resolution. That just seems out of touch to spend so much energy arguing and on procedure. I just think that is completely tone deaf, even if it might be your process. And we have so many issues here with trying to get businesses back. I've been really involved with the safety and sanitation protocols that would make people feel safe. And we want flags to make our populations feel welcome. And seriously, guys, let's not fall on Robert's rules or procedures or whatever. There are world shaking life and death things happening. And we need to promote our brand of the Art Coast community as open, welcoming, inclusive, and extremely gay friendly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Glenna DeJong, I recognize you. Yes. Thank you, Mayor Trester. Um, I'd like to speak to agenda item 5A regarding the pride flag. Um, I am pleased to see it flying outside of Saugatuck City Hall. Thanks for getting that done and taking steps today to make it part of an official resolution. I'd like to tell you why it is so important to my wife and me. We've been together for 33 years. During those years, we saw a constitutional amendment pass in 2004 banning same-sex marriage. In fact, there already was a law on the books that banned us from marrying. So that was just like a further nail in the coffin. Um, beyond marriage, it is still legal in Michigan to discriminate against LGBT people in housing, public accommodations, and until a few days ago, employment. Gay Pride Month and symbols such as the gay pride flag are celebrated to exert our right to exist without persecution. We are making progress, but we are certainly not there yet. For those who question why there isn't a straight pride month or flag, be thankful that you don't need one. Um, shortly after the amendment passed in 2004, we came home from vacation to find peeled fruit on our front porch, which puzzled us at first until we later saw um, the vandalism that accompanied it. Make no mistake that discriminatory laws embolden haters. A few years later, we woke on Thanksgiving to find our house egged with the words, get out lesbos scrawled across our front door. Every day for the next decade, when I drove up our quarter mile drive, I'd look out our front door to see if it was defaced. Those kinds of things led us to make the decision 14 years ago to purchase a home in Saugatuck with the eventual plan to move here in retirement because we no longer wanted to worry about fearing such acts that would happen again. We love it here, but seeing the dispute over the flag has given us anxiety, which maybe is more understandable in light of my previous comments. I am grateful for allies like Holly Leo, who understand the true meaning of the pride flag and the fight to support their neighbor's right to not only be free of persecution, but to be celebrated. She is a hero and it's a disgrace that she has been called irreverent and a bully. We should all value her ability to get things done. Back at a council meeting in May, Holly asked the issue of flying the flag to be put on the next council workshop agenda, and it was not. 
Therefore, she had no other option than to try to have it added at the last council meeting where it was rejected. So while it was a procedural issue last time, we cannot forget the fact that it was ignored the time before and asked to be put on an agenda at the beginning of June. Um, she therefore had no other option than to try to have it added at the last council meeting where it was rejected. I'm afraid we are on a slippery slope of letting personal issues get in the way of advancing other issues that are important to Saugatuck residents. We need a reset and quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie Vlasky. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have two points to make today with my time. The first is that uh, there are those here seeking to make this flag topic a debate about one particular flag and its message. While that's an understandable mistake, it is still a mistake. The debate before us is whether the city wants to get into the business of flying flags that are not the American or the state flag. Once citizens understand that new flags are appearing, there will indeed be requests for more flags. Good governance requires that there be a, a process in place to proactively address those requests when they come. Just making it up as we go along is not good governance. My second point revolves around a few areas of this uh, resolution that Councilwoman Leo uh, submitted. The first one is, quote, the government speech doctrine defined by the U.S. Supreme Court establishes that a government organization such as the city of Saugatuck may advance its own expression without requiring viewpoint neutrality when the government itself is a city council. I would argue that the issue is not even necessarily viewpoint neutrality, but viewpoint exclusivity. Without a policy, this one-off instance of flag flying is the very definition of viewpoint exclusivity. Exclusivity in that only this one particular flag has gained the favor of official government expression. Does this not run entirely contrary to the previous verbiage about being inclusive, welcoming, and tolerant? My second area is, quote, whereas the city's flagpoles are not intended to serve as a forum for free expression by the public, rather, the city's flagpoles are to be used exclusively by the city, where the city council may display a commemorative flag as a form of government expression. I would ask you who exactly are members of city council if they are not members of the public primarily. They are members who happen to have been elected to our main governing body. Does this distinction allow them exclusivity to unilaterally decide that only one group of people will be represented and commemorated to the flying of flags? If there is no flag flying policy in place, this is exactly what your constituents are going to believe. I would argue that this flag issue has already turned the flagpole into a public forum, however. There are many written statements advocating for this particular form of government expression. The manner in which this resolution and the flag were effectively implemented has indeed already turned the flag into a spirited public forum. So in closing, my first preference as a resident here is that the city not be in the business of flying any flags except the American and state flag. My second preference is this, if we are going to fly any additional flag at all, there'll be a process by which all citizens can make requests and understand what the guidelines are. And what I am not at all in favor of is flying one particular flag and excluding future opportunities for others to fly, fly flags by not having a clear process in place. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. I'm not seeing any other raised yeah. hands. Kirk, uh, oh, here, uh, Daniel, hang on a minute. I'm sorry, something's in the way of your last name, Daniel. Uh, could you identify yourself and uh, go ahead and speak? Yeah, Daniel DeFranco from uh, Saugatuck Township. Um, my comment is, is slightly personal. Um, I was, was out in high school. Um, I grew up in New Jersey. Um, and I remember one particular instance where, you know, I was in study hall and, you know, kids are, can be cruel and take advantage of the fact that you might be in a vulnerable position. And a um, student came up to me and, and you know, proceeded to, you know, um, you know, essentially make fun of me for being gay and calling me out and using, you know, a few slurs. And um, I didn't really hesitate in my response. And I, I told him that in the state of New Jersey, what you just did is considered a hate crime and I can legally press charges against you. Um, I don't know how true that statement was, but I did know at the time that there was a law on the books in New Jersey that said that 
LGBT students could not be harassed in school. And I knew that, and that empowered me, and that allowed me to respond to that person. Um, I knew that there were people in the government um, that acknowledged me, that knew I existed, that, that knew I was important, and that I needed that extra protection. Um, and that's always kind of carried with me the, the importance of, of government acknowledging, um, especially its most vulnerable citizens and standing with it. Um, and I do see a great deal of, of parallels between the raising of the flag in Saugatuck um, and you know, that law protecting students in New Jersey. And I, I do think about it, not just from the perspective of visitors coming here, but from the perspective of the youth in this community. Um, that some of them might be going through challenges with their sexual orientation or their gender identity um, and maybe, you know, struggling um, in private. Um, but raising that flag gives them, you know, notice that this community sees them, that this community recognizes that they're important. And despite any backlash that they might receive, which you may receive some backlash, that you're willing to suffer through it because you see what's right and you're willing to stand up for what's right. So I'm just thinking of it too in perspective of, of the youth of this community that, that the raising of the flag, that what you all did um, means so much. It might be the, you know, the difference between life or death. So I just thank you and I applaud you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Elizabeth Estes. Thank you, Mayor Truster. Elizabeth Estes from Saugatuck Township, but own business in Saugatuck. Um, I want to address a couple of things that were said in the beginning. And, um, and at first, I think I should say thank you for putting the flag up. Um, um, as a member, as a, uh, as a proud member of the gay community, I'm also a proud American. I'm a proud Christian. And I think it's important to say all those things because I think people sometimes make these about those delineations and lines uh, in the sand. I do want to mention, though, you, you, uh, Mayor Truster, you mentioned the meeting on the 8th, uh, Monday the 8th, but the meeting that, and, and I will say that this was the meeting that I was on, the meeting on the 26th, it was brought up. And one of the council members said that it wasn't flown because of the alternative or objectionable, some variation of those phrases, groups that asked. And what it felt to me was it was that slippery slope argument. We can't do this because of the slippery slope, which was also addressed by a couple of the other people who who spoke prior to me. Um, that slippery slope argument is always one that people use to maintain the status quo. Um, now, I, I don't know who those people are. I know people have asked what those other groups were. It's never been addressed. It's never been mentioned who those many objectionable groups were or alternative groups were. But surely we haven't devolved to the point in our local politics where things are said to justify positions or decisions that weren't made. By not flying it, it was a decision that was made one way or the other. And just ignoring it wasn't going to make it go away. I also contrast this with what we've seen in Douglas. They made a unanimous decision. I happen to be on that council call as well. And they made a unanimous decision. Second was no must, no fuss. The flag went up and it was no big deal. And I think, you know, I don't know why. Maybe they didn't get the many requests from the alternative groups that you did. I don't really know. But what frustrates me, and, and when I hear people say, well, why, why your group, why your flag, an easy line to draw is that the difference is, is that we're going to allow the gay flag pride to be flown during gay pride month because it's a month that you yourselves have celebrated. You yourselves put out a proclamation, and as you rightfully said, you were the first city to do it. That, to me, is a pretty fine line. We're going to celebrate a group of people. We're going to fly their flag. Um, the other thing is, it's interesting about it is, is that we're not an alternative and objectionable group. We're a group of people who have rights enshrined by the United States Supreme Court, even more so this week. Um, and just like you did, many other cities around the country will recognize Gay Pride Month everywhere and the people that belong to that. So we're not a questionable group. We're not an alternative group. We're a group that you yourselves, thankfully, have, have decided you want to celebrate. And the other thing that I think is the most important is that's that, that, and I said it on Facebook, that flag isn't just for the gay community. It's not. It's a symbolic of a welcoming community to show that we are welcoming to anyone who wants to come here. So I just want to thank you. Um, I want to thank you for flying it. I want to thank you for putting it up. But for those who say that, you know, every other group is the same, it's not the same. 
So thank you for your time and, and I appreciate it. And I appreciate what you guys have all done. And I know this hasn't been easy. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, anyone else wishing to make a comment? Yes. Uh, Amy Kenny. Hi, um, thank you very much. Um, a few people have already made the same points that I'd like to make, but uh, first of all, um, this uh, I think was made by Mr. Straker. The pride flag is a visual symbol of what was already passed when the city council designated June as Pride Month in the city. And also my husband and I have been full-time residents here for two and a half years. And one of the things that attracted us to this area was that being welcoming and inclusive seemed to be an important part of the community's identity. In thinking about what I wanted to say today and thinking about the words welcoming and inclusive, I actually found this definition online. It was from the Multicultural Council of the City of Saskatchewan, I think. A long ways away geographically, but I think it's right on target for where we should be. A welcoming and inclusive community is a community where its citizens and members feel safe, respected, and comfortable in being themselves and expressing all aspects of their identities. It is a place where each person shares a sense of belonging with his other members. It is home. I'm really proud to call this community home and proud to know some of the people that have spoken today and share their thoughts. I think we should allow the pride flag to be flown at City Hall, not just in recognition of, of what the purpose of June as Pride Month was, but to celebrate that we want to be and we are a welcoming and inclusive community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Uh, Glenna? Yeah, actually, um, this is Marsha Casper, so I'm, so I'm talk president. Hi. Um, yeah, first, I, I would like to thank, thank you for um, uh, hit, flying the flag, um, despite the controversy. Um, and I just wanted to say that I think it's important that people understand the history of um, being gay in and I'll just say the United States because you could go further back, but the celebration in June is a, is stemmed from the Stonewall Uprising that took place in on June 28th, 1969. And so this has been been going on for 51 years and it started, um, you know, with, with raids in um, the gay bars in um, uh, New York City and um, gay people I mean, were, were tired of it. They were tired of it and they were going to push back and they did push back and it has evolved over time into um, rather than being ashamed of who we are, um, that, that in fact we are proud of who we are. And, you know, as Glenna had already mentioned, we have experienced um, hate crimes. Um, and more than, you know, beyond what Glenna had mentioned, um, we've had friends who have been beaten with baseball bats coming out of a bar, you know, in Kalamazoo, um, and called vile names, you know, walking down the street, going to events. And the, again, sh she had mentioned the reason that we came here, um, to retire is because, um, we wanted to live in a safe welcoming place in a place that respects all people and flying you know the pride flag in june for the this national um uh i'll say national holiday as um i think a prior member had mentioned that clinton declared in uh, june of 1999 as national recognized um is just it's one small thing that can happen you know that this that the city can do to say we are welcome i'd also just like to mention quickly that i retired from consumers energy and i was the first chair in forming the pride alliance of consumers energy and i did that oh, probably what five years ago now and had met many times with executives and they wanted to understand the discrimination that took place. And they met with, you know, a lot of gay and lesbian um, employees, um, uh, some transgender 
employees to understand that. And it's very important that you do understand um, and listen to LGBTQ people on this issue it is so important. Um, and I guess with that, again, thank you for, f for flying the flag. And, um, you know, part of a, you know, a criteria going forward is, yeah, it is nationally recognized. Um, and I, I just hope that uh, this will resolve to that we, you will fly the flag in June. Um, it's, it's just absolutely critical for, for LGBT people and allies and that includes, you know, co our customers, and the customers are visitors. Um, can make this town as vibrant and inclusive and diverse um, as it has been and and will going into the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, comments. Anyone else uh, wishing to speak? I'm not hearing Hello? anyone. Just to verify. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hi. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please identify yourself? Sure. It's Catherine Simon. Oh, hi, Catherine. Um, hi. Um, I just want to give some clarity. I sent a letter in. The uh, posture of my letter was about policy and procedure. The only reference I made in my letter to Ms. Leo was to indicate that the cart had been put before the horse. My reference to a bully or someone being irreverent was with regard to the letter that was sent to council by a gentleman named Mr. Dean. And that letter, as far as I'm concerned, should have been given to the sheriff. It was a threatening letter, even though Mr. Dean apologized or reframed his letter after the fact. But at no time was there any reference to any council member or community member other than that gentleman. And I chose at the time not to use his name. Uh, the only reference was to a process that we're doing a resolution on something that has no policy surrounding it. We asked people to submit an application for events. And we have timelines regarding that and guidelines regarding that so that everyone has equal opportunity. While I appreciate all the people that have spoke to the passion of this issue, if it's not your issue, then you have to recognize that other people have passions towards other issues. And to say this is too important to be surrounded by policy or procedures is what gets us all into trouble, ultimately. We should have guidelines for these things and respect each other when we do it and recognize that everyone should have an equal shot at asking for a celebratory flag or acknowledgement of a specific celebration. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Again, Kirk, I'm not seeing anyone uh, on my screen. Do you have, do you see anyone wishing to speak? I do not. Okay, well then we'll uh, close off uh, public comments at this point and move on to our discussion items. And the first item on the agenda a is pride flag. Um, Kirk, would you like to uh, begin with some comments? Sure, just one moment. Let me get the uh, item up here. Okay, so hopefully you were able to look at the agenda item report that's in the packet. Um, the proposed resolution was submitted to the City Council for consideration. And um, as I do with most everything, I um, turn over things to get some input from the city attorney, which I did and included that memo in there as well. Um, I think at this time, the council has a couple different options that you could do. Um, if you wanted to do a resolution, uh, you very well could. There, there's some suggestions 
um, that's being recommended if you do the resolution route. Um, the council did pass a proclamation recently and you also could amend that proclamation and include flying the flag um, during June as well. So you have a couple different options if you wanna, if you wanna go that route. Um, I can answer any questions if anybody has any. Anyone have any questions regarding the material that uh, we have before us? Mr. Mayor, oh, I see Chris raving her hand. I'll, Chris, I'll, Garner, were you wanting to speak? I saw Chris wave her hand first. That's fine. I'll speak in a second. Okay, Chris, go ahead. Uh, I think that um, the, the issue that is in front of us uh, obviously is an emotional one. And regardless of, of how it came out as perceived that we were trying to hinder the adoption of that fact that we went ahead and put it up, really goes to the core, I think, of how the whole city council feels. And I know it's frustrating to have to jump through hoops and everything, but because we didn't have the hoop in place of how to do a policy request like this for flying a flag, now people feel that we didn't want to put it up at all. So I think it's very important that we act and show our resolve, either through the resolution or adding to the proclamation. But I think we definitely need to take a step and say, this is it, this is how we're going to do it, and we're proud to do it. Okay, Garn? Yes, thank you. So I'll just be so bold as to move that we amend the proclamation that was approved unanimously at, to include the final sentence, be it finally resolved, the city of Saugatuck will display the pride flag at Saugatuck City Hall from June 1 through June 30th in acknowledgement of LGBTQ Pride Month and to celebrate, celebrate diversity and inclusion. Second. <laughs> Moved by uh, Lewis, second by Peterson, uh, to amend the uh, Pride Resolution. And I, I'm looking here, Garn, were those words uh, in our in our package here? Do we have them in front of us? Yes, sir. We okay. received that in our packet. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you were, you know. You were yeah. <laughs> I wasn't making it up off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure they were recorded right. Okay, Barry? Uh, I think I heard Garnett also say to strike out the uh, date of 2020 in that resolution so that uh, it really is June, because the resolution reads June 2020. Uh, well, this is, yeah, sorry. Well, I don't know if you said that or if I should amend it to say that. No, so, so I'm not reading the resolution. I'm reading the proclamation. That oh, that's we... what I'm reading, though, too. Yeah, uh, there's no 2020. Yes, last sentence before the, uh, you can see it's redlined and. Yeah. Uh, so, got it. There you go. Yeah, take it out. So, which is it, in or out? So, can I say it again? So, this is Garnet. Let me try it again. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't hear it all the way the first time. I think this is what I wanted to hear. All right. So, I'll try it again. I'd like to amend the proclamation to that we vote on to remove the year number one and number two to add the last sentence that i read in full just a bit ago which is included in our packet second all right that's clarified um any further discussion mr mayor can i jump in here and be recognized yes sure. this is kurt so um just so we understand what the process is here so um if the council is uh, so inclined to amend this proclamation, what the the best procedure would be is it sounds like if everyone's in agreement with um, council member Lewis, then we would add this on the um, Monday night agenda to be officially acted on because typically we don't take action in workshops. So I wonder if that's how everyone feels, but I just want to um, try to keep things, I guess, on a procedural track, but um, I, I think that's a great, great direction to go in and it would solve the problem and we would be moving forward. But I just want to make sure we do it in the proper way. Yeah, I understand. Um, I too suppose uh, the option that uh, is, is uh, stated in the motion, um, but I'm not sure if we're even permitted to adopt a uh, uh, proclamation in a workshop. Uh, clarify that for me, somebody. Very well, I'll, I'll clarify it because it's, it's not, it's a discussion item, it's not an action item. So the, typically what will happen in the workshop is 
I'll get direction from city council on how you want to proceed. So in this case, it sounds like the council wants to proceed with amending the proclamation. Um, in that case, um, I, that will be on the, um, the Monday agenda for official action. And um, um, I don't have any doubt that it would not um, pass unanimously, but that would be the correct process to follow. Um, if the council is so inclined to give me direction to put that on the agenda. I just need some direction if you want to do a resolution or a proclamation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Barry? Yeah, um, a good point, Kirk, and uh, we never uh, make motions at a workshop. Again, it's transparency. Um, so I guess I would ask uh, the motion be uh, withdrawn because this now, we've get, we're giving the city manager clear direction that this is the way we want to go with the proclamation with the uh, changes that Garnett made and, and was seconded. Then it's out there from now until Monday at seven o'clock for everybody to read it and be able to make their comments on it in a transparent manner. So I would request that we withdraw the, withdraw the motion so we can just wrap it up on Monday. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, this is Kirk, and it really, the, the motion's okay. It's just, if it's a motion to put it on the Monday agenda would help me, then I get some, some then council, I get direction. It's, yeah. it just makes my job a lot easier if I have direction from the entire council of what to do. <laughs> so I think um, that, that would work out fine. Well, if you want that on there, I just not comfortable us changing our uh, procedure by not passing things at the workshops, but I, I can go with it. If uh, Garnet and Chris would be amenable to amending the motion to say and put it on uh, the council agenda as an action item, uh, then I think it should satisfy your concern as well. Yes, it would. Garn, how do you feel about that? Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. So let's put uh, it on the agenda for Monday to get it done. That's all good. Okay, Chris. Let's get it done. Yep. Let's, okay move. let's okay. move it. Does any other council member object to going that route? No, I don't. All right. For the record, then I'll take a roll on it. Kirk? To tell you the truth, Ken, we, <laughs> I'll be honest, we don't really need a roll or a motion. All we need, all I need to know is if there's unanimous consent from council to put this on the Monday agenda, and I'll put it on there. I just, I just need that direction. It sounds like everyone's in support of it, so it doesn't need to be this complicated. I'll just put it on the agenda, and it'll be voted. That's, unless there's any objections. I hear no objection. Let's go. It'll be on the Monday meeting, the first item for action. Okay, thanks. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, uh, next item on our um, uh, agenda is the Ordinance Amendment, Title 15, Chapter 154. Uh, Cindy, would you be so kind as to lead this? Yes, I would be happy to do that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at the last workshop, I brought to you a it was actually at the last meeting, I brought to you a proposed amendment to the um, ordinance that prohibits offices in most of our downtown. I took this to the Planning Commission, started last fall already, and the Planning Commission was unanimous in their vote that offices were not appropriate in our downtown business district. Um, it was quite restrictive. And I listened to your discussion again after, after the meeting. They're very nicely recorded so I can refresh my memory. And I think most of you felt it was a little bit too restrictive. So I did prepare an amendment that um, in the downtown area, the, the red on your zone district, the central city, offices would be permitted on second and third floors, but in the peripheral commercial zone districts, they would be permitted by special land use. Now, that's what I understood from hearing you at the last meeting that you wanted a little bit more flexibility into it. So I did prepare this amendment for your consideration on Monday. Okay, um, discussion. Ms. Mayor, um, <clears throat> I was on the planning commission uh, going through the discussions about this in public hearing. And, and I, I am in favor of also relaxing it to some extent. The amendment that we have right now has the city center, Water Street East, Water Street North, Water Street South, all having personal service establishments permitted by right. And that's how they are now. 
then it add in the city center, it would allow business and professional offices on the second and third center only. And that's, if you have your diagram, that's the red part that's on, on Butler and a little bit on Culver. And then on C2 Water Street East, that's the green part that would allow professional business offices permitted as a special use. I agree with both of those. Where I would have my concerns is on Water Street North, which is the light blue, and Water Street South, which is the two blues. Uh, I, for specific reasons, I believe the light use, Water Street North, that area is pretty much becoming a real activity area. And I think that to have uh, uh, business and professional offices would, would create some parking issues. And I just don't, don't see them fitting into the um, atmosphere there. And on the Water Street South, uh, having business professional offices permitted by special land use, I do not believe we should ever have anything on the commercial waterfront that uh, is similar to that. It should maintain re rental and restaurants. That's my five cents. Mr. Mayor, this is Garnet. I have a question. Go ahead. So, so Cindy, just for um, make sure I've got myself directionally figured out, Water Street North. Currently, we have Mill Pond down there on that end, don't we? Yes. Okay, so we already have set the precedent, so to speak, of an office in Water Street North. Right. Yes, I think that was established in 1982. Okay. That was my question. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor? Gary. Um, I'm digesting all this and trying to follow it on a computer screen, but I'm generally in agreement with what uh, Councilperson Peterson said, and I've got to read it a little closer, but it, uh, I'm kind of leaning that way too. So I just thought I'd chip in on that. I think so too. So just uh, to clarify, Chris, what you were saying is that the um, light blue or medium blue, not the periwinkle blue, but the light blue uh, district of South would not be uh, eligible for offices on the first floor. Right. Correct? The light, no. The, the only one we're doing the second and third floor on was actually for the red area. That's the only issue that came up is we would allow for business professional offices on the second and third floor. On the other ones, the way the amendment was drafted, they could be on any floor, first, second, or third, or whatever. Uh, so what I was saying is I don't have a problem with that at all uh, in the um, green area, Water Street East. Mr. DeGroff talked about that. That was the area that he specifically requested. When I look at the periwinkle, uh, this kind of all came about because for some reason, Mill Pond did get uh, approval to go in there. And that's kind of where, Cindy, there's some history there. I can't remember, but some way it got up there and then it, nothing's been approved to go there since then. And so this Correct. whole thing is kind of cleaning up that language. The blue, the light blue and the dark blue, which is Water Street North and uh, Water Street South, I don't think there should be any professional offices there. I think we should maintain our commercial waterfront with retail or restaurants. I agree with that. So is that what this says or not? I, it's confusing. It does, it does not. Number one, if you go, let's start at the top. C1 City Center. That's the CC on your map, colored red. That would stay exactly as it is, as it's printed right there. No offices. No, professional business offices on second and third floor only. Yeah, okay. C2, which is Water Street East, and that's the green, that would change so that you would have business and professional offices permitted a special land use. That's the area that Mr. DeGroff asked us about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Water Street North and Water Street South both now allow personal service establishments permitted by right, and so that would stay the same. But I, I did not, uh, I am not in favor of the business and professional offices on either one of those. Others? 
Mr. Mayor, this, oh, I see Holly. Holly, go. Holly? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, um, I just I just want to uh, put in a little COVID caveat into this conversation because I appreciate that there's been a lot of work that has gone into thinking about this and updating it. And um, I just am hesitant. I know Mark Beckin mentioned this the last time we talked about this. Uh, we don't quite know what the world is going to look like in a year. And I just don't know if this is the right time to be um, reconsidering what allowable businesses. I don't even know what kind of businesses we might have on the other side of this. So um, that that's just something I am concerned about. I'm wondering if we should table this for a while um, and look at this again, say six months or in a year. I don't, I, I appreciate that we need to update it, but I don't know if we need to do this now. Mr. Mayor? Chris, and then Barry. Um, I think part of this was pushed forward, uh, Polly, because there had been requests coming to Cindy, people wanting to um, open those offices. And uh, without having some kind of um, ability to allow them as well as the termination, uh, there was no way Cindy could give them a yes, no, or a maybe. So um, I suppose we could table it, but that's that's the reason it came forward was because Cindy is getting requests from different people, and uh, that's where we're at. Yeah. Uh, Cindy, did you want to respond to that particular point before we get to Barry? Okay. Yes, I, I did. I did have received some uh, requests, and at the way it stands right now, I cannot say no to a real estate office in our central city. So that was what prompted the the discussion and the change. And once they're in, they're in forever because they would have legal nonconforming status. So that was what the, 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 the hurry was about not to have all kinds of professional offices in the downtown because just because there's space. Um, I had a lot of comments of people who say, people are not gonna drive from Grand Rapids to walk in front of an office. So the intent was to, instead of just allowing it free, free hand in the whole downtown area, we just limit it to second and third floors in the, in the red and allow special land uses in the other one because with special land uses, you can put um, conditions like parking and lighting and, and different things that you can regulate. So that's, that's just my comment. I can't say no. If a real estate office walks in here today and asks for a permit, I have to say yes. Thanks. Yes, I would uh, like to support moving forward with this, not tabling it. And uh, I will support the council persons Peterson's uh, changes. Jane? You're muted, Jane. Especially in the Water Street East section of this, that's a very, very mixed use. There's residential there, there's, I mean, there's first floor housing, there's, I think that it would be very important to allow business offices there. Um, some of those buildings um, haven't been rented for maybe a year. Um, and because the use is so mixed, I think an office space really adds to the area, not detracts. And if the other two areas are by a special land use, we can put all kinds of restrictions on them. But to stop and table everything because of what might be, we have no idea what might be. We need to move forward and continue the business of the city. And if it changes, we can change this. So. Thank you for moving on. Thanks. Gart? Yeah, very good. Um, I have a question, a couple questions for Cindy, just to make sure I've, I've got it. So, Cindy, how many requests have you gotten for spaces like this? I have one, response, one request for a real estate office that has been approved, and I have another request for an engineering office 
So those are the only requests I have so far. Okay, and where were they requested? Which which of these? One was um, the real estate office is on Butler Street at 233 Butler in the old Oostings building. Mm -hmm. And the other one is on Water Street in the green area. And that's for the engineering office. And would both be on the first floor or? Yes, they are both on the first floor. Okay, and so let me, uh, second or third question. Generally, um, because these are special land use, they would come in front of the Planning Commission for discussion and review and deliberation, right? That's, that's correct. If you okay. adopt it as it's submitted, any special land use has to go in front of the Planning Commission and they can establish some standards, Got such it. as parking and different things that the Planning Commission would find appropriate. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Ken? Mark. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I can support uh, the changes as presented in today's uh, uh, overview by uh, Cindy. Um, I think it's important to give property owners some flexibility to have other options if they can't rent their property. Uh, the fact that someone might not drive to, down here from Grand Rapids because there's a real estate officer in office on the first floor, I, I, you know, I don't, that doesn't make any difference to me. I'm more concerned about the property owner who has to pay his taxes and, and can't fill the space. If it's up to me, I, I'd, I'd, have, I'd allow offices by special land use all over the community, but I can live with it as presented. I think we have to look at what currently exists in some of these offices or in some of these zones with some of the existing businesses. There's a lot of them on Culver Street, say across from Coast, that could be conducive to, to uh, uh, professional office. A lot of them have parking in the rear. Uh, the, the, the retail is important, no doubt about it, but I think having options to uh, uh, allow the property owners to occupy rental space to help pay taxes and fund our schools and all our other taxing uh, entities, I think is, is important. The fact that we have special land use provisions on these three zones is, is critical, uh, gives the uh, opportunity for oversight by the Planning Commission. So I can support it the way it is. And uh, I, you know, so that's my position. All right. Any further discussion? So I'm hearing this that we're kind of split in terms of uh, particularly um, Water Street South, North and South, North and South. Which way do we want to go? Barry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, one way to skin this cat is to send it forward as it's written and uh, amendments made at the council meeting, which uh, I know a person that may add an amendment to that because I kind of heard it. But we can move it forward to get it on the agenda as is and then amend it. It's an option. Uh, Jane, did you have your hand up? Well, that was that was basically what I was going to say as well. We can, you know, we can either pass it as it is, or we can not pass it as it is and do some amending. Um, we can do that at the council meeting. Okay. Garn, I thought, did you have your hand up? This Chris that was from before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyone? Chris. I agree. Let's move it forward and we can have that discussion on amendments Monday night. All right. Sounds like we have consensus uh, to do that. Let's move on then to the uh, FY 2021 budget. Uh, Burke, you want to lead yes. off on this? Yeah, I sure will. And uh, our city treasurer is on this meeting as well. Um, we have a public hearing scheduled for this Monday's meeting um, for the um, proposed budget. Um, the revenue and expenditures have not changed from the previous um, recommendations that I submitted to council. Uh, we, I did make some modifications in the um, budget transmittal letter 
kind of explain some things that we were doing differently from the first time that it was presented. Um, number one, I had a, um, a proposal or request in there for um, appropriations for another position. And since that time, um, with the city clerk's position becoming vacant, um, I'm reevaluating that and um, I'm not requesting that be put in there. So uh, we made some minor adjustments there. Um, other than that, it's pretty much the same budget um, in terms of, again, in terms of appropriations and expenditures. So what will happen on Monday um, in terms of the council adopting the budget, a public hearing is required by law, but the actual Appropriations Act is this, this document that's hopefully you can see on your screen here and it's uh, in your packet and in part of the budget itself but the council will be approving this document, which is the budget, I guess, condensed into its individual um, cost centers. So really, I guess, you know, if the council on Monday night, your options are to make adjustments there, but if you know if you have anything you wanna change now, it would probably be much more helpful for Mr. Stanislavski and myself to try to make changes. Otherwise it will be presented as it is right here and uh, the council can either approve it, uh, amend it or deny it, but you do have to adopt a budget by June 30th. So we'll have to have another meeting after Monday if you're gonna have some more deliberations. So the question is moving forward with the budget as presented for uh, adoption on Monday. Uh, discussion. No? Sounds like we go Mr. forward Mayor. with it. Kirk, uh, do you need any further guidance? Uh, Kirk, I'm sorry, Chris, go ahead. I just, I'm, I'm hoping that the, this, the meeting on Monday with the public hearing because of the Zoom meetings will have a better turnout. Darn. Uh, yeah, I agree with Chris. We'll make sure we get some people there. I, uh, Kirk, I, I wanted to say what I've appreciated in the way in which you presented these is you always include the, the line, appropriations are not a mandate to spend. Mm -hmm. So you're basically providing a roadmap and giving a bit of structure, but in the end, we could end up not spending all of this. Um, secondly, I appreciate um, you're considering removing the request for an extra position. I just think with everything up in the air, you know, COVID related and, and you know, revenue sharing and what we still don't know is going to happen with the, the state funding and taxes and the whatnot. It's, it's wise to just move ahead um, with the structure that you currently have. So yep. thank you. You're very welcome. So this, I'll have this on the, um, the agenda for a Monday. We'll have a public hearing, the public can comment and uh, just like they do in the public comment section and the council can listen to those comments and then ultimately um, this will be an action item for you to approve or deny or modify. Okay, thank you. Any other uh, comments on this one? Then we'll go to council comments. Um, Jane, would you like to lead off? Public comment. Public comment. I'm sorry, thank you. I, I missed the public comment on any issue. Uh, anyone in the audience wishing to make a comment, please uh, raise your hand. Barbara Lucier. Barbara? Can you hear me? Yeah, now we can hear you. Okay. Um, with, I, I just have a question about police services and what kind of reports the council gets about our police services and our policies. I went online to try to find something and was completely um, unable to find anything. So then it occurred to me that maybe you get reports that are not necessarily available to the public. That's just a general question and concern. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Um, we do get reports of incidents um, at each of our council meetings, uh, but if you have questions beyond that kind of report, uh, you'd be free to contact Kirk, who can I'm sure help you out with answers. Okay, can I ask one more thing? So when you get a report, is it in the packet? It's usually distributed at the meeting, Kirk. Uh, okay, so that's why when I look at the packets, I don't see it. Right, right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Elizabeth. 
um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. One comment on the land use, and, and I appreciate the work that's gone into that, but just something to think about, and this is way over my pay grade, um, but there was an article in Forbes a couple of weeks ago that's worth looking at, talking about re-envisioning retail, um, and what's gonna happen with retail as it relates to going more towards e-commerce, but also reimagining pickup at stores and how important it is to have spaces for people to pick up products at stores now that people are ordering more online. And then the other two things that are of, of value and of, of maybe something to think about as you're looking at this land use issue is the exodus from cities to small towns, which we know is gonna happen and we've heard it and we've seen it. And obviously we all believe that our small town is one that people would wanna move to. Um, and the other are examples of redevelopment areas. I've been to down in, in, down in North Carolina and all over the country actually, I've been to about five different places where they have co-working spaces, which has driven younger um, business people downtown, and then they eat more at our restaurants and they shop more at our stores. So I, I don't think it's an either or, I think it's a both and. The, the, the solution that you've suggested would, would, would work for that. Um, but we are the type of, of community that could benefit from a situation like that as it relates to looking at retail differently and looking at ways to bring um, a different demographic down to our community in order to eat at our restaurants and our stores. So I don't know what the answer is. And, and that's, you guys are smarter than me on things like that, but I would encourage this article and I can forward it on to you. There's a bunch of articles about how retail is going to change in the next couple of years post COVID. Thank you. All right, Blenna. Um, yeah, this is Marsha Casper again. <laughs> um, yeah, I just wanted to um, say thanks to Chris Peterson. Um, I, I liked your uh, amendments um, for the, on the zoning issue. And um, I guess in, in a little bit of ways to, to echo um, what Liz S. has just said. The other thing is that we looked at, we do have a master plan and the master plan does not take you into a direction of, you know, having these, you know, professional offices um, in several of those um, of the zones. And so I don't know, you know, because of the COVID outbreak and the fact that it's a 2016, I think that was the last time it was amended, that maybe it's time to, you know, take a fresh look at, at the master plan um, for Saga Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Bar Barbara, your hand is still showing here. Do you wish to speak again? Okay, thank you. Anyone else? All right, thank you very much for the comments. Then we'll move on to council comments. And now, Jane, would you like to lead off? Sure. Um, I'd like to ask a question about fireworks. I heard fireworks again last night in town. I heard fireworks over Memorial Day. Um, we have very specific ordinances about when you can shoot off fire fireworks and when you can't. And I'm wondering if the police are going to enforce fireworks legislation. That's all I have to say. Burke, have you ever discussed that with a sheriff? Yes, and the answer is yes. If we get uh, complaints or they see, I uh, have an area where that's being um, lit off and they can get there before the people disperse, um, they are enforced and investigated. Most of the time they're lit off and it's hard to determine where they're coming from. But yes, if they're, they, they will in, um, investigate them and they will um, um, follow up on any, uh, any violations. Thanks, James. Uh, I just, do, does there have to be a complaint or can, you, can the police just, I mean, if they're in town, they surely can hear them. Yes, if, if they see them or hear them, they will, they will go down there and investigate it and determine if there's a violation. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, got Sorry, I was muted. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm looking forward to our unanimous support of the pride flag going forward from here on. Um, I just want to say as a member of the LGBT community that I am so very happy with the many people who spoke up um, both in support and basically questioning the need to fly the flag, you know, uh, 
part of what Tim Straker said uh, kind of resonated with me that we really have three federally recognized months, Black History Month, Women's History Month, and Pride Month, and Pride Month being the last that was so recognized and made a federal recognition in 1999. Um, as a member of the LGBT community, um, I am proud to call Saugatuck home. I'm glad to see that we are doing this. Um, I believe that our community, both gay and straight, uh, will be very happy with us moving forward. And we will be seen as the open and inclusive and welcoming community that we are. Um, I'd love to see, you know, I, I was very happy to see the excellent turnout at the Black Lives Matter March this last Sunday. And that just goes hand in hand with who we are as a community. Everyone is welcome here. That's it. Thanks. Chris? I, I just wanted to say how beautiful the downtown looks and our parks and everything. And I think that the uh, pop outs are just a welcome addition to our, our whole atmosphere of a, a tourism town. And I've had, uh, I've been contacted by people who are also interested in possibly helping donate so that we can uh, get the funds to get the interurban up and running on the weekends now that the CBB has dropped that. So I'll be kind of pushing that forward a little bit over the next week. Thanks. Mark? Uh, yeah, thanks, Ken. Uh, I just want to echo uh, some of the uh, statements Elizabeth Estes said about uh, allowing the, uh, uh, the, the offices, business offices in the, in the community. Uh, for years and years and years, we keep hearing about what can we do to have year-round businesses in our downtown area. And uh, she kind of alluded to that. And uh, so I think that's something we should be keeping in mind as we think about this until uh, Monday that uh, I don't think we're gonna get a, a slew of these things, but, but you never know. And uh, I think it could be beneficial in the long run. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Holly? Um, I just, I just want to say that I'm really excited and proud that the Pratt, the pride flag um, flew at City Hall for the first time, and I was really happy that it was up when the Supreme Court uh, decision came down. Um, like Pastor Sal's letter said, the flag says, all are welcome here. I uh, want to thank Douglas for loaning us a flag, um, and for <laughs> Kirk uh, getting it up very quickly. Um, and I just... I'm so happy and I think we could have done this any time in the, in the last five or 10 years. And um, there's so many rainbow flags in town. Um, it, it fits right in and it's who we are. So uh, I'm glad that we did it. And uh, I just wanna to touch on something that Jane uh, talked about with fireworks. And I'm wondering if we might wanna think about uh, doing a web page that uh, has ordinances that uh, people that are staying at VR, VRBO or Airbnb can look at and they can understand what the noise ordinances are and what the fireworks ordinance are, ordinances are so that when people come into town, they could actually be able to know, you know, what time they need to be quiet or how these, you know, what, how the ordinances are working and how it affects them when they're in town or all of us. Okay, thank you. Um, Barry? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, amongst all this uh, controversy that we've been wrestling with for the last couple of weeks, and, you know, first of all, I want to draw everybody's attention to Ordinance 0708-27-1, which was one of the first non-discrimination ordinances passed in the state of Michigan, and it passed this council unanimously on August 27, 2007. And three of the people that voted for that and helped craft that uh, ordinance are sitting on the council today. So we have a long history of taking official action uh, for non-discrimination. And that that's concerns me what was going down because you know the controversy was fueled by misinformation threats, intimidation, prejudice, and non-transparency. I mean, I'm afraid 
looking at Holly's post from June 9th on her little social media thing, the first sentence is, none of it's true. So that's misinformation. Uh, then I get an email from some guy named Mike. And Mike's going to come for me. I am threatened, and I was quite frankly scared. Uh, so he's going to come for me. He's, he was intimidating uh, that, you know, if this council continues its battle against the moral values of our community, the battle, give me a break, you know, we'll come for you. And then prejudice creeps into the thing where he accuses our town of being a bastion of white aged wealth, whatever that means. And the non-transparency, you know, as elected council members, we are obligated to transparent as mandated by the spirit of democracy and instituted by our rules of procedure. We are charged with protecting the right of the public to voice their opinion before taking action on any subject. This is the second time this year a council member has tried to add something to the agenda that was not made public. They knew it was not transparent and not allowed, so I can only come to the conclusion that it was done intentionally. Councilmember Leo's posts have been condemned rightfully, but also not surprisingly cheered. And that's a problem. Why do folks feel they're somehow losing their rights and freedoms if flying the rainbow flag is vetted by the public in an open and transparent manner? This wouldn't be so troubling if it wasn't being portrayed as a good versus evil. So here we are, some of us defending why all council actions must be vetted by the public in a transparent manner, and some people condemning us for following the spirit of democracy. But we're not losing our freedoms. We're defending them by simply asking everyone to respect others' opinion and their right to express them. And I just wanna close with, uh, I got an email today from a very well-respected resident and member of the gay community. He said, first, you guys are put in a very tough spot by some of your fellow council members. I don't envy you. Second, thanks for continuing to resist the efforts by council members to add action items or resolutions to an already published agenda. It is not transparent if an item is added after the agenda is public. Interested citizens are denied the opportunity to hear council deliberation and comment on a topic that may be important to them. Third, I think the flag issue was a manufactured drama. The flag flying approval could have been added to the original gay pride resolution, added to the agenda of the regular city council meeting of June 8, or voted on at a special meeting. Douglas called a special meeting on this subject. It is unfortunate some members are using this issue to purposely put Council in a bad light. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Barry. Um, I'd just like to close with uh, a comment of my own on a different topic. Um, over the weekend, uh, Spock Talk was great. We had plenty of visitors, and to uh, my knowledge, and in, in cruising around town, all of our business establishments were adhering very well to the uh, COVID 19. Uh, governor's uh, orders. Uh, they were wearing uh, face masks. They, were, they set up situations where customers could distance them, themselves. Uh, it all looked, that, all looked pretty cool on their part. What didn't look pretty cool were the visitors in town who were massing together, uh, not wearing face masks. Probably not one single visitor that I saw uh, was masked. And I'm really concerned about how that's going to affect our record here. I mean, we have had, to my knowledge, uh, a couple of cases in our area of COVID-19, and uh, we're, we're one of the better locations in the country as far as our success rate uh, is concerned. So I'd like you to think about anything that we might be able to do to um, uh, encourage uh, visitors or, or whatever, or, or even bolster the uh, restaurant owners, for example, um, in their effort to, to keep us safe. Um, I got to tell you, one uh, very prominent restaurant family, one of the members was telling me that they had a handle of very belligerent um, 
individual who insisted on entering the restaurant without a face mask. Uh, so what they're doing, what the business people are doing is not easy. And uh, I hope we can find some way of, of supporting them. So I close with that and uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Jane moves and Chris seconds to, uh, motion to adjourn. Would you call the roll please? Kirk? Or Cindy, who can I do, who's there? Cindy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, no problem. Okay, bye. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll do, I think maybe Cindy's might uh, have doing something else. So um, who was the, um, who made the motion, please? I did. Uh, Jane and I believe Chris seconded. Yep. Okay. For Plank. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Lewis. Yes. Leo. Oops. Um, I'll go to Skip. I'll go Johnson. Yes. Trester. Yes. And Beckin. Yes. And Leo. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. uh, we're adjourned. I would like to thank the uh, public participants who joined us again today. We had a really good showing. Uh, we appreciate your interest. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.